All right. Call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thanks for coming, everybody. I think this is our, what, the second time we did, did, did this? We did it last year. And it's all good. Roll call. Boy, we got a big roll call. Who wants to do roll call? Yeah. Sandy Here. Crystal Here. Here. Mark Here. Cindy Valentine. Artie Bryson. Here. 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 Dennis Here. Dennis Here. Brian Here. 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 All right. <clears throat> Again, thanks for uh, coming, everybody. It is snowy, snowy day. Uh, let's see, new business. We don't have anything uh, under unfinished business. We have three items. The master plan update. We probably won't get to as far as time, um, but if we do, we'll. Uh, We'll, we'll do a brief synopsis on, on where we're at with it so far. <coughs> um, first thing on the uh, agenda is boathouses. <coughs> and I was going to let Rod uh, take over, but I know we we're going to see with the ZBA uh, what issues they've been, they've been seeing uh, going on uh, before them lately. And I, I know I've been seeing some issues myself, so. <coughs> Go ahead. Yeah, um, good evening. I'm Robert Mayo with Gibbles Webster. This is Eric Pizzini. Gibbles Webster and Matt Wojciechowski. Good to see everyone here and thank you for taking time out. Uh, yes, the first item that we are looking at is, is boathouses. And uh, as um, already mentioned, I think a really good way to start this out because I know a lot of the discussion seems to be coming from requests that are going to the Zoning Board of Appeals is uh, and it, we've passed out some slides showing the, the, the language that the Planning Commission's been looking at, but I'd like to hear, maybe have the ZBA members share some of the um, challenges and some of the concerns that they've seen with the uh, with requests that have come before the ZBA and uh, give us some insight. I thought that might be a great way to start it out and then we can start a discussion. <coughs> Sorry. You okay I, there, Brian? I, I just got over a. <coughs> right. We've had several Corona. cases be, come before the ZBA lately for boathouses. And I was flipping through Eric's thing earlier, and he's talking about industrial versus residential. Everything we've been seeing is residential. Yeah. Um, we haven't had any issues with any commercial ones so far. Biggest issue is they don't want to. You're right, the sides. They don't want to store their antique Chris craft in a boathouse that has open sides any more than somebody would want to store their classic Corvette, I suppose. A lot of the cases, it's not going to cause any sort of a vision and obstruction. We've had some comments that most people would rather see sides on a boathouse than look at somebody's you know, boat all day long. Um, there's a lot of people upset because it seems like in the past it wasn't enforced equally. Some people got sides, some people didn't get sides. You go through the township, it's kind of a hodgepodge. And there are certain ones that they keep pointing to. So-and-so got his boathouse with sides. Why are you going to deny me? Um, I just think we need to come up with a resolution to it because for me personally, it's really hard for the ZBA to rule on these. It's hard for me to get past how it's a practical difficulty that you need sides, but yet at the same time, the board has ruled in the past and given the hardship. So I guess that's what we're <coughs> wanting to address. <coughs> Any other comments from the... I was, I mean, are you guys, does that sum it up for you guys yeah, pretty much? <coughs> I mean, <coughs> what I've been seeing too is, is similar to what... Uh, Buying referred to is I, I, I think 
the intent of the law or the rule was to protect the view where where someone's view is out in the, on the water. And uh, I've seen a case where <clears throat> they're the, they want to put a boathouse not out on the channel in uh, along the, the river, but it's actually behind, they have a canal or something going alongside their house, and they want to put an uh, enclosed boathouse behind their house where there is no view. Right. And on a cut, like on like, a cut. Like on a cut. And where they could actually build a garage, a pole barn with sides, but we're telling them, no, they can't put sides on their boathouse. And the only difference is one's over water and one isn't. Um, I, I, I've seen that uh, quite a bit. And then we have the issue with, uh, we don't, uh, if you have a commercial property, a marina, um, where they have an enclosed boathouse and, uh, you know, under our, our uh, ordinance, as the way I read it, um, we don't allow that. On, you know, we don't differentiate between commercial property don't or, or, or residential. And, uh, you know, a marina will have, you know, a, a 15, 20, 20 uh, slip boathouse that's enclosed, and we don't allow that. Um, third thing, too, I, I've seen, and I, I don't know, Gary, for I haven't had a chance to talk to you. I've had um, some issues or people that have a, a old boathouse on the water with sides, and uh, they want to, um, it, it, it needs maintenance. They want to reside it or, or even put a new roof on. Same footprint, same structure. It just, I mean, it's ugly and they want to spruce it up, and, and we haven't been allowing that. And I know the DEQ does, if it's on the same footprint. Um, the, you know, if it's grandfathered in or before zoning, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll allow them to do ma basically maintenance on it. And uh, we haven't been doing that. Um, well, you know, at the same time, though, the building code, as far as maintenance, you you don't you don't need a permit for replacing siding or trim or any windows or anything. You just need it for a roof. Right. I know, depends on how much. So maintaining a boathouse, so, so how you do it as Well, I, I know I I've, I've talked like I say I haven't had a talk. But some to of them are like leaning into the canal. Oh, right, they right. don't want to fix them because they're going to lose their sides. Where if we allowed the sides, I think it would encourage them to redo them and fix to them. upkeep and make them look I was right. Say, the other yeah. thing I thought about too is. The law has kind of changed, or the rules, that your view is really only straight out. Right. And that's a lot different than when this was written. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yep. um, yeah, that's, that's... Okay. All right, so let's, those are really good items, and I think a lot of what I'm hearing can be reflected in some amendments to the code. Right. But I want to, I think the key issue is what I, so what I'm hearing with regards to the size in residential, because that seems to be one of the number one issues, yep. is that the, if those particular structures, the boathouses with sides, are on a cut or a canal or something that's not out in the open water, then it sounds like there's at least some, the ZBA is saying they'd like, they, they think it would make some sense to allow that. Is that, is, is, I just want to make sure I'm hearing that correctly. Whereas if it's out in the water, and it's going to be clearly seen by all the neighbors along there that the sides would not be permitted. Does that come up? I just want to make sure I'm hearing this correctly. The DEQ will take care of that part of it. Right. Because they do not allow boathouses on any river front. So let's talk about that particular issue and see if anybody's got comments and anything they want to add to that and if that's the general consensus. Well, that's how we've been leaning is side cuts or side... Uh, Side or side canals or canals behind the yard or you know what I mean uh, where it's not in the front of the house it's be all behind the house because considering the lake front your house is looking at the river you know so that's how we kind of been, not out in the main channel right right that's how we've been channel, looking at it is so because yeah, what I think the code needs to reflect that right that we need to amend the code if everybody's on board we need to take that to the planning commission have a public hearing, get it to the township board, 
because what we want to do is eliminate the, the variance requests. Mm -hmm. Or if we may not eliminate them, but have everybody on the same page that this is the way we're going to regulate it. And if somebody wants to do something different, they need a very unique practical difficulty that is unusual and not the same as their neighbors have. So mm -hmm. It should be very unique. So, so that's what I, I just want to make sure. Right. Because I do th think the intent of it was to protect people's view. Right. But if the boathouse is in a spot where it's not harming any view, uh, like I say, they, they would have the right to build a, a garage there. It's just not over the water. That's the only difference I see it in my mind a lot of places. The other thing, the other thing I heard was existing boathouses with size being able to maintain those. I think that's absolutely something we can make sure that's clear yep. in the code. That if it's existing, it was legally established, it's there, it's vested basically. If you have to maintain it and replace the sides or do whatever you want, you're not going to expand it necessarily. You're just making sure that it's going to be safe and can be maintained, that that would be permitted. I yeah, as long as it's under the same footprint. Same footprint, right. Yep. Yeah, I, I think we're and they can't go higher or, right. or put a second story on or anything like that. I think that can be done. That, that I don't see an issue with that. Um, um, are we, is everybody generally okay in the residential areas with the current height limitations of both houses? Are we seeing any problems with that? Or is that good? I haven't, have you? No. No. Okay. All right. Charles. Anything else on the residential? What do you mean they're all why, why are we allowing living quarters above some of the boathouses? Um, you can't really do that in, in, uh, in residential. We have them. Under your current ordinance. Well, I guess that's not a question. How did we get to this point? Because we know what our current warrants can be, but I can go within two miles of where we I, can, I know where five of them are. I can tell you right now. They're all on South Channel. There's okay. one where I used to live. There's Chartiers. There's like four or five of them. Well, you go down Anchor Bay Drive. Yeah, there's Well, there's, there's, there's going to be 50 or 60 or 100. So 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 let me ask you a question. question. Are yeah. these primarily accessory structures where someone's renting them out? No. Or? No. no. Okay. You're not and renting I guess the out. question is, though, if we allow it above a garage, what's the difference if we allow it above a boathouse right. if we follow the same rules? Because you're plumbing above the water. Eagles communication, they, yes. they, they require okay. fish roof. Yeah. Some, some of them, too, are half over water and half on land, yes. Okay. Most of them are. Most of them are. Mm -hmm. uh, especially in the Bay Drive, they're, they're, you know, so I don't know how you deal with that. You know, you, you'll have a big building and, and a third of it's over water and two thirds is over on, on land. Well, you can go down there in South Channel and some of them are like <laughs> dance halls. Yep. And they have losing quarters on them. I can see them. I see them. So and I, and I, and I'm assuming there's, so, no, there's no plumbing in them? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. assuming there's no plumbing in them, yes. Okay. Right. There's probably full kitchens. But I guess, how did we get to that point? How were they in the first place? It wouldn't have been an accessory plumbing unit, which you've seen for our. Uh, right, no, they wouldn't. This is, this is, this is blatantly a uh, boathouse with living quarters of bodies. And it's beautiful. We're not saying they're not pretty looking. And I think that goes back, though, to what we were saying with the ZBA. I think the problem is it wasn't equally enforced at some point in the past. So we need to change it going it forward, forward, but we can't really. That's why we have a new inspector. Right. right. And that's why we're having this discussion so that everybody can be on the same page and then it'll be enforced according to the new direction. That's what we right. all want everybody on the same page. Thank you. Right. Well, you know, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword, or gray area, because how are you going to tell one person no and tell another one yes? You know, so. Well, we're not. We're telling them all the same thing. To. Same thing going forward. Right. Everyone's going to be the same, and then we're going to amend the ordinance to reflect what your collective vision is, and then the ZBA has to stand by that, unless there's something very unusual associated with that property with the that would meet the terms right. of the what a practical is. And the existing violations are going to be grandfathered in. It's grandfathered at this point. They're, they're pretty much grandfathered in unless they were illegally established and the township chooses to enforce against those. 
And that's they that's couldn't have been you know. permitted. They could, I mean, if they receive a permit, there's it is what it is. We don't know. I mean, we don't know here whether they did or not. Well, it's easy they enough did. to check. Yeah. Right. If, yeah, and you can see if they didn't receive a permit, then yeah, that's a decision. You Remember, they tore one down many years ago. I know. So. Yeah. I have some concerns about setting precedent. Um, we, we've allowed things to happen regardless of whose shoulders it falls on. You know, there's things that have taken place in this township that exist currently that are in clear violation of some of our policies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if some some shooter on the river wants to build that again, I'm afraid we're going to be taking the court on this. And I don't know that we're going to have a good position. Um, we can certainly strengthen our position. Mm -hmm. We can, we can certainly ordinance. define our ordinance. Mm -hmm. but we sort of set precedent on this already, so I, I have those concerns, and I don't know. That's exactly my concern. But when did you change the ordinance? The 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 well, I would make, I would probably suggest or say that if it is like uh, you were saying earlier, part on land and part over the water, that there's a clarification on that, just so that we don't open ourselves up. Well, look at those hundred people over there got them, and then you're telling me I can't. They're going to win every day. Got what though? Does well, well no. Well, a lot of them put them in illegally. Well, no, the ones that have been permitted, I'm saying. Not but but, but again, general. going forward is different than what was done. Yeah, like, like Bond, like Bond said, we change the ordinance, you change the precedent too. So mm -hmm. we're just having a discussion. Yep. We, we recently that's why we're here. Accessory dwellings, yeah, and potentially, I think, and we're gonna Eric's taking a look at it. If the boathouse was partially over land and the dwelling was over land, yep. you may be able to have that permitted through the accessory dwellings if it meets the requirements in your ordinance. But they're still supposed to be set. I don't think it'll meet the set bags. That's, 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 that's what we're checking. I think that's from the ordinance book. That's it. Yeah, that's we got that, it. that could got be the issue. And then the question becomes do you, do you want to potentially allow that? Right. Just know if you do you want to potentially allow that to happen? If you don't, then fine, we'll make it clear in the ordinance that it's not permitted. Um, if you do want to allow it, then we could adjust the setbacks in the case where you have a boathouse that's partially over the land, partially over the water. So that's a, I throw that back, I guess, to you to, to respond in terms of what, what your <coughs> preference is. I need that look at county. Yeah. All their, you know, I know. Those houses. I know. They have so many for me. Yeah, Anchor Bay and Colony, we have a ton of them. Um, Maybe not in the North Channel or South Channel. Well, I, I know DEQ does not allow plumbing over water. So would we want to look at it as two different buildings within our ordinance? Okay, you have the boat boathouse section. This is the rules for that section. You have the section above land where we do allow living quarters and plumbing of, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It could be, yeah, absolutely. Something, something along those lines. Yeah, that way we would be getting caught. Right, bag. yeah, yeah, because, you know, I know where there's a boathouse and, and, and same structure, they have a car. Right. A garage. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you, you treat them as, as two different animals. Yes, and that could be done. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, because we do allow living quarters above uh, auxiliary buildings. So would you use that as a dual accessory, which it says in the ordinance, you can only have two accessory buildings? So would that use up your two accessory buildings? It would be one building. For two different purposes. With two different uses. We'll have to look at that and you'll have to make a decision as to how you want to look at that. You may want to in the case of that, you may allow that and then allow one more. That's, it's that's, not that's, unusual to have a building with two uses. Of yeah. Right. No, I'm not saying there isn't, but if you, if you go to one building, I don't see now you're going to have places with three buildings on there. Basically, no, it's a boathouse accessory building. It's going to look like two buildings, that is, as I would envision. You'd have one building that has a portion over land that has a dwelling in it, another that has a portion over water, still looks like one building, and then you might have another building that's a shed. For example, so you can get your store to more. Could, could you define it as a percentage? You could. Percentage of the land area? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think it does. It's I, think, I think that's already in there. The yeah, I think it's it is. 30% yeah. yeah. or something like that. It's 30, 30, yeah, 30. 30%. Yeah. 
30 percent yeah <laughs> so on colony when we have um, a road that splits their piece of property or do we consider those that's one piece of property or are they two parcels depends on if they've joined them or they're right. maintained separate. i think they're all joined chris they're, 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 they're all joined. We can't have two separate. Yeah, must have two different. Animals. Otherwise, you would have a, you would have a, a piece of property without a primary residence. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just thank you for the clarification. Yep. And the, some of those are so old; they're long before we had a zoning or zoning in the township. So that's how come there's some of those now. Okay. Any other comments on that section? I mean, does everyone feel comfortable with that? What we talked about? You'll be uncomfortable when we get through with it. I'm sure. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's what we're seeing. We, I just think we need to hammer this out because right. we've been, we've been, we've been just yep. enamored with them. Exactly. Okay. And then regarding non residential. Yep. The language that the Planning Commission has been reviewing would, yeah, as, you, as you mentioned earlier, they're really treated the same now, so yep. we would treat them differently. So if you're in a commercial or an industrial district, boat houses would be permitted to have side enclosures, and the total width of the boat house structure shall not exceed 45% of the shoreline length of the subject property. That's the way the draft language currently reads. So do we have comments on that? Anybody want to just do you feel that is workable or do you have concerns with that? I'd like to hear comments on that particular language. Repeat that again. So in not only in commercial and industrial districts, zoning districts, okay? This is non-residential. Um, page three at the bottom. Yeah, page three in the lower right hand yep. corner, page three. And it's under 8D. In districts where boat houses are permitted to have side enclosures, and that would be changed to say commercial industrial because we're going to fix that with the other. The total width of the boat house structure shall not exceed 45% of the shoreline length of the subject property. So if you've got 100 feet, you can go up to 45 feet of the width in a commercial or industrial piece of property because you can have an enclosed boat house and have several boats in there that you, they might be being maintained. If it's, in, you know, if it's a use that allows for that to occur, there may be maintenance going of, on. Of the whole piece of property all the way around? The shoreline, 45% of the total okay. shoreline. That's the way it's currently drafted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be fit. How far out from the shore? How far? That's the EQ's issue. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be real to see. SDEQ. Yeah, right over the water. Well, now, no, I'm talking about the boathouse itself. So you got a boathouse on, on, on a canal or whatever it is, the commercial area. Right. How deep is the boathouse? Um, let's see if we have something that's in that, that, That's probably DEQ permit. They, they look at the footprint over the water. We would do that the projections on a case by case basis. Right. That's what, we was, what they told us. Yeah. We don't have a state in for it. We take the set for it. Uh, As I say, is if we, if this is a boathouse and it's a commercial property, they're going to be on an inland area, regardless. Why should we be uh, regulating, the re regulating the shoreline? Because that's where their bread and butter is. Is having a a marina. I mean, your you know your business to cut you know to be in a marina or have a marina. You'd want to be able to cover those people's boats and get twice the amount of money for a well. Yeah, and well, and I would, I would. The I way this breaks down, you can't even do this. So right. Just, so that's why we're throwing it out. So that's good. We want to hear comments. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't even have a restriction on it. Right. I mean, if it's if it's an inland area, there should, as long as they require the setbacks. Well, what about some commercial properties? You have a commercial property on one side, and you have residential on the other side, and you build a boathouse so far that you block the waterway. Well, I don't know how you'd be blocking the water. regulation on that. It's like you said, like Marty was saying, the DEQ would be saying how far out it can stick into the into the water to begin with. There's a difference between blocking the waterway and a view. Right. Right. Yeah, blocking the waterway. Block the waterway, would be, absolutely not. Right. That would, a view. Be, that would be a sight plan. Right. Right. Really. What's blocking the waterway? Five feet, zero feet, ten feet? So what's blocking the waterway? What's it's the whatever the core says, or DEQ. So you go to page five at the bottom. Under the communication from Google. Yeah, right. I think what the discussion is um, 
the navigable waters determination, which there's some relationship there with property, where the property boundary is. But I don't know if it's going to be the worst part. I can't read that. So it's a case by case basis, and they're trying to maintain the navigable waters as the term we use. Yeah, the DEQ so will set that, that case by case uh, in their permission. Well, case by case analysis by Eagle, basically. Yeah, they won't. They won't let you fill in half the canal from both sides. They're going to be. You've got to maintain that. It depends on the pro how the property line. Okay. Yeah, the, you know, it, it, it depends on the property line. It depends on, on what type of shore it is. It depends on, on what type of waterway it is. Um, it, it depends if, if it's a fish spawning ground too. I think if you're if you're also setting boat house back onto the property, it's going to be over the water. It's going to be all the property. It, it all depends. I can try to get some more information from you on the depth question. Yeah, and I think you need to be clear when it's more in the open water and not in the canal situation that you, you're clear as to what that limitation is going to be. We'll, we'll look into that. somebody's view or a public obstruction, I think we're in a position where we should be saying yes. I Looking agree. for ways to approve this stuff, not deny it. Unless we can find issues with line of sight. You know, or, I, I, or the issues with the Eagle or the core. Well, yeah, and that's, yeah. We've, been, we've all been through some of those permits. They're well, not easy. No, they're, they're not. There's a bunch of things <laughs> to jump through. But, but that's, you know, that's my opinion. Okay, anything else on boat houses? All right, so you're going to summarize this for us? And, or? Yeah, so we're going to actually we're, we'll, we'll go back and we're going to make some we're minutes, taking notes, yeah. Right? And, we're going to, and so the, the key issues I have is that um, for the residential, we are going to um, have some amendments in there that would allow for the maintenance of existing um, enclosed boathouses in residential areas, as long as they don't expand the footprint. Um, we are going to allow for um, sides and enclosed boathouses uh, as long as it is in an inland area canal and not an open water area for, for residential. Okay. the view, yep. Uh, and not obstructing the view. Um, we are going to um, allow for the potential, as long as it's consistent with your other accessory dwelling recommendations, to have a portion of the boathouse that's over land to have an accessory dwelling in it. Um, and then the balance of it could be over water that would be for the boathouse. Um, and then we are going to be investigating for non-residential uh, in terms of the depth over open water and how that might be regulated. But then if it's not over open water, it's in a canal, um, or a recess situation, then you would not have that type of regulation. Uh, the question that I still, I think, I'm not 100% sure on, do you want us to continue moving forward with the 45% of the shoreline concept for the non-residential? Non that's, I think that's for the planning commission to hash okay. out. So we'll hash out and you'll, we'll have some discussions and we'll look at alternatives and we'll figure that out and, and they'll make a recommendation. 
And that's um, that's the summary I have. Anything else? Anything else? This is house. Hey, hey, well, well, oh. Yeah. Oh. This is house. Well, when you were when you, uh, if the core. It says right in here, if the core in the DEQ, or Eagle now, uh, uh, approve the permit um, for whatever size of boathouse and everything else, it should be an automatic as far as us, you know, because right now it's, it, it keeps going up in front of stuff when it's already, it says right in here that it's an automatic. So I think that should be. As far as what, the footprint? Yes. So that's, there should be an automatic through the building department so that doesn't have to keep getting, you know. Uh, I don't think we tell them they, they have to go make it smaller than their permit, do we, Gary? No, that's correct. But right. uh, I think, uh, you know, DQ, they say if you can have this size boathouse and the location of it, but it's still the township that decides, you know, our ordinances on how they're going to be built. So, whereas, yes, we look at that and say DEQ approved you for this footprint, we still want to look at it through our ordinances. If we're going to allow sides or, or yeah, not. Okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You Pipes know. and right. that sort of thing. So. I have a question. Yes. Would it be a good idea to have, or is it possible to have our enforcement department look at our language to make sure it's exactly written the way it's understood so we don't have to keep reading stuff back over and it's a great over. idea yeah we will um, when we have a draft we will work with your building department and have that um, review get their input and then do that before it comes to you sounds good and it's great idea. okay is that it on uh, boat houses we good Okay, let's go to uh, shipping containers and auxiliary buildings. Um, so uh, where we left off with the planning commission on this was a, a focus on residential use. Yep. Um, the pods that people use when they're moving, um, or there's a, a flood issue or something with their home. Um, accommodating those, what, what the standards would look like to address that. We didn't really... Um, get into non-residential use of shipping containers with the planning commission, so that may be where we start um, the discussion, but um, it's not something we're seeing a lot of requests for, um, as far as we know, um, but it's a trending topic in planning with people using them for houses, and um, the cost to acquire one is reasonable, so it could be an easy storage, storage shed or something like that. Right. So, um, this is more of a, a beginning stage of what what you'd want to do with the zoning side of it. Right, well, like I, I expressed my opinion, it's my opinion only. Um, we're seeing that, you know, you can pick up one of these used containers at this great price, you know, you can get them on the cheap and people are just dropping them on the ground and say, that's my, my shed. And quite honestly, it looks like hell. And, uh, you know, I, I, and, and, but the way it's set up is legal, so I thought, you know, we should maybe require some kind of siding on it that, that goes kind of with the house and maybe even a pitched roof. Um, but, I mean, that's my own, my own thoughts. And a foundation. And, right, and I was, I was going to talk to Gary as far as what you would require for a footing for under it. I would love to see you know, some type of a rat wall or pudding being installed up underneath these things. <coughs> right. Uh, especially make them more permanent. Right, because uh, that's what's happening. Than a move it around kind of a situation. I think if we uh, added on to, um, you know, the performance standards that we have, and it's kind of vague when it comes to this. Right. Maybe we added something to that about these that they, Be more you know, architecturally pleasing. Mm -hmm. You know, and not just these metal containers that are popped on the ground. Right, because you know they're old, faded out international orange paint or exactly. Or, you know, I mean, right now we do have rusted. you know where uh, under the building design, uh, we're not restricted, uh, you know, architecturally restrictive here, uh, but the appearance uh, based on uh, quality and re relationship to the surroundings, uh, mm -hmm. so that might be helpful. But that's kind of all we have. The other thing is materials that are architecturally uh, in harmony uh, is another verbiage that's in there. That's if very get, objective. It is. And that's why if we could get more specific right. on these, um, you know, to be more of what's around them. 
Mm -hmm. And then does that count as one of your accessory structures? Yes. Yes, that's an accessory structure. Yeah. Because yeah. right. yeah. right. yeah. right. right. yeah. <coughs> what what we're seeing, you know, you can buy buy one of these large things for you know fifteen hundred bucks. In New Baltimore, DPS has three of them that they're using right now. Right. Oh yeah, they're they're great. But like I say, someone will throw it in the back of their yard and and uh, call it good, right. and uh, it's not um, conducive, I think, to some neighborhoods and, and places. Well, on our own ordinance, as far as uh, like sheds requiring uh, rat walls, or right now, our sh right now, uh, you can do anything under 200 feet. So you can just have sitting on center blocks. So if you just took this this container here that's 20 foot by 8 foot, it's only 150 square feet. So it doesn't require footing or rat wall or anything. It can just sit on center blocks or a couple pieces of wood, just going off the size square footage. So if you we're gonna, you, uh, well, that'd be more of a permanent building. Well, I mean, right now a shed and you can put up right. a shed and just put it on center blocks and have a 10 by 12 shed all day long. Now here, yes, you got a 20 by 8 uh, storage uh, unit or this thing in there. It doesn't technically, by the square footage, it's not required to have a footing or a brat wall or anything permanent. You're absolutely correct. Right. So that's what I'm saying is now, now where are you going to draw the line as far as well, when are you going to still square it? footage because I right. mean you, you have some that are 40 footers. <laughs> well, I would see yeah anything over 200 you would have to yeah. do that, but. Because then we're now, because that's what they're going to call it as a shed, mm -hmm. you know, and not a, you know, even though it's a metal storage building, that, but that's what, what is in a shed description is pretty much, you know, I, I just, I just point that out as far as the square footage. What, what, have, have you dealt with this in other communities yet, Ron? Uh, we have seen some communities do some appearance um, requirements <coughs> for accessory structures, absolutely. Uh, and so I, we can, have, what we'll do is we'll pull together some suggestions to run through the Planning Commission. And I think I'm hearing what the concerns are. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously we'll coordinate with, with Bill and Gary and everybody. And we'll, we'll yeah, because I think we just had someone, did we have someone last week, this week come in, or last week, Cindy, that wanted to, to drop one of these in? They dropped one off. Yeah. And we didn't have any, Gary can back me up, we didn't have any ground to stand on to forbid it. Right. Until yesterday we found out it was on separate parcels and you oh. can't have accessory structure yeah. on a vacant parcel. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think that mm -hmm. what we're going towards is to have unique standards for this type of structure. Yes. Yeah. To not have it grouped in with things that you already allow. Or, right. right. Yeah, like a time limit. 30, 60, 90 days or well, something if, like if, that. Well, if, if they have a temporary one for sto temporary storage or something, uh, yeah, a regular pod or, or, or whatever, you know, that, but, but yeah, we, we have, we'd have we have to set kind of some kind of a, a stein, time what, what stamp. What would be wrong standard. with uh, saying, okay, so the uh, storage containers, to me, that's a repurposing of a storage container. Mm -hmm. Actually, that shouldn't be a permanent structure, obviously. If you're going to get a commercial for a commercial or construction, or if you're going to be moving for a part time, it should be a commercial pot that, right. they, that they rent. Somebody come in and want to drop a uh, storage container uh, as a repurpose uh, and keep it there for a certain amount of time, that's probably okay. But again, I think uh, commercial pods is the way to go and just pretty much eliminate the storage containers. Well, a pod to me is equivalent to a U-Haul trailer that they yeah. in and park right. there and they uh, use it while they're moving. Yeah, those would be regulated differently. Right. The I mean, they're is, similar to it. If someone wants to have a shipping container for an extended period of time beyond what a pod would be on the property, that maybe that might be treated as a special land use um, or some other type of special regulation where they'd have to demonstrate come and ask, why, or ask permission based on a specific need, and there would be locational criteria and appearance criteria associated with that as well. Uh, so that's something I think we're going to think about and run some <clears throat> language. Yeah, I, I, I think, and Gary, back me up if I'm wrong, we would have a hard time enforcing it because how will we know if if the guy bought it and dropped it there, or if he's leasing it from some somewhere? We, we have no, be a permit process. That right. Make it clear. We yes. have no, no idea. Well, a commercial pod would be marked. 
Well, yeah, but okay. Well, so you, we're going to outlaw someone to uh, to borrow one from from a guy for six months or three months or whatever it is. Um, we got we, we we have to do a time stamp on it. I think the the shipping containers would be equivalent to a pack. But that's I have one down on a job site in Detroit. Right. And I mean it's literally it comes almost like a fifty yard dumpster. They have mm -hmm. a truck that it sits on, they come and drop it off, and yeah. whenever you're ready to have it taken off the site, right. they come and pick it up. And but that's for construction. But it, construction? I mean, it'd, be, it'd be the same idea as <coughs> a, a standard pad. Like was it a shipping shop. container? Yeah, you have a shipping mm -hmm. container for construction, I can see that. You're building a home or whatever the case may be, you, you know, get one of those. Right. But what I'm saying is if, if somebody was moving even, they, they could set it up to where they could have a shipping container dropped off, picked up, and taken and dropped off in another location. The same, the, a pod and a shipping container are almost identical in concept, except one is made with chintzy sides that is not necessarily made to be super secure or durable, and the other one's made more durable. Yeah, yeah, so, 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 so one is ugly and one is pretty. Well, it's a fresh coat of paint that's on it. Yeah, I think you can just establish appearance criteria for yeah. those. As long as it meets the criteria, it might be a pod, it might be something different, and there's going to be time limits that will apply either way. Rod, I seem to recall back last year when we started talking about different things in our ordinance and this chippy container issue came up. I think we got a list of things that we were supposed to look at. Mm -hmm. And we had a really nice presentation about the differences. And I think we talked about foundations and we talked about putting roofs on them and we talked about either siding them or painting them. So we had a little bit of a start on it and then we, we just got super busy. We did. <laughs> we exactly. just had tons of public hearings. So So we just need to bring it back yeah. up to the forefront. But I just and remember that conversation. It was really nice because I, I think Matt had even brought pictures of people that had, or places where people had actually used them. Mm -hmm. For building homes, <coughs> right. a certain percentage sure. of the homes. That's happening. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would just break it down to it. one is a permit structure and one is a temporary structure. But would they even go to for the, the permit? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, I would strongly you know, agree yeah. with that. Yeah. That was right. crossing my mind. Yeah. So is that for That's that way we would know. You know. So there would be a. You know. Um, and there might be a middle ground in terms of a longer temporary. Um, structure that has to require some special approval. Have them get a renewal or something. Yeah, so we'll, that, those are some things to look at. We could also throw the words like renting or do you own it, right? Because that's an indicative language of, of what's really going on there. Um, on portable storage uh, for consideration, we could, we could maybe tie that into a building permit. Or maybe we grant them X amount of days uh, without a permit, and then after 30 days, it has to be tied into a building permit. Because, like Robert, I use them all the time. But 99% but of the time, they're tied into a structure with a building permit. And when the building permit, you're going to cash and, and get your, your certificate of occupancy, the problem is a lot. use a hand in hand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, what you thought? Yeah. Thank you. Are we all set on shipping containers and mm -hmm. auxiliary buildings? Okay, we got what? Well, we have to distinguish then between shipping containers and uh, buildings. And auxiliary buildings. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 have, we have a definition for auxiliary buildings. Yes. We'll, we'll come up with a definition for shipping containers. Well, that would be, and again, going back to what is permanent and what is temporary. Right. You know, like Chris said, if you're going to do a permit permanent process. permanent thing, then it would have to have a certain <coughs> thing of standards, like you right. said, roof, roof sides, or roof. something of that nature, and modified. Sure. That is not just a. So would we be allowed a uh, permanent accessory building along with the shipping container? Mm -hmm. Well, we have accessory buildings. Well, we have an accessory uh, building, but you only allow one. So you know, a shipping container is that two? Yep. If you already have this, um, yep. yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Shelter is the term that's used to differentiate. Shed. It's providing shelter for objects. It's one of your two buildings. Mm -hmm. As time went on that, we have to be small. Okay. 
Um, did you want to talk five minutes about the master plan? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Um, just briefly, and Eric can chime in too as well, uh, we are making good progress. We pr provided the planning commission with a, and I think uh, this went out through email uh, last month. Uh, yeah, right. And I think everyone's got a copy of that. Uh, this is the existing conditions analysis. Yeah. Uh, it goes through and gives the kind of the snapshot current conditions. Tonight we're talking to the planning commission about uh, vision, goals, and objectives. It kind of sets the, the tone for um, what's going into the plan. And then in the next few months, we'll be coming back actually with the plan chapters that will be based on the direction uh, that we get in the goals and objectives. So uh, we're, we're making good progress and uh, we're um, moving forward. So I almost hate to ask you this, Rod. Yeah. I, I think I noticed yesterday our uh, rec plan is up in 2000 or 2021. 2021. Do we want to combine our rec with the master plan or? Uh, I we, mean, we, we, we can. Start, we, we can start the process for that. Um, that it's a slightly different process for because that goes through uh, right. and our approval and, and the like. And, um, we could get that process going. I mean, we can combine them. That's what I'm saying. Combine it and then submit that chunk to DNR for approval. So yes, we could do that. I mean, is that something we should? Do? I mean, I, uh, you want to keep your rec plan up to date? So Yo, I you know. I'm. I'm. Yeah, we're absolutely. getting grants. You're getting grants. <laughs> you, you've been doing well. Yeah. You might as well keep doing that. Yeah, that's right. Most of the timeline, you're going to run into this every year. Where does this year buffer? Right. Well, that's why I was wondering right. if we should combine them. Uh, you can do that, and then if you do, it, it would be a chapter in the master plan. Um, right. However, yeah, let, let, let us give us some thought, and I'll get back to you directly. All right. We'll, we'll figure out how we might do that. Okay. Because yeah. I know I, I know other have, observation. Have, have done that. So yes, we have, and we can do that and try to keep you up to date so you can get your grant application in the future. All right. That's Very important. Do we have any uh, public comments? One at a time, come up, give us your name and address. And I'll take my sheet. <laughs> what would you do to your arm? <coughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's not for sissies. Actually, the sheet, uh, hey Dave, I just had to be going through some of this. You guys are talking about both houses. I just, in my, uh, in my condition, I had a lot of time on my hands. So, uh, a, did, a, did you get, I'm sorry, did you get his name and address? Dale Bryant, 1931 Maple. Mm -hmm. um, section 20.25, this actually says under accessory apartments, because as you guys were talking about how do these happen, I'm not that familiar with it, but it says uh, accessory apartments shall only be located attached to the principal residence structure, located above or attached to an attached or detached drive or boat house. So it looks like that. Yeah, that, that shouldn't, boat house shouldn't be in there probably. Well, that's what I'm saying. I didn't think you guys were aware of this piece of. Well, piece of based on right. our discussion, it would be because you're going to allow it if it's oh, overland. Yeah. Overland. As long as it's overland. It's yeah. it only the portion right. overland. But, okay. but it's in here now. Yeah. So maybe that's how it happened in the past. So, okay. So I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, thank you. Actually. And then uh, just one of the other things I think we're going, seems like the right direction to me in the boat houses, uh, generally speaking. Uh, we talked about uh, the footprint. Uh, but one concern I have, I guess I see a lot of the older boat houses that don't have much of a pitch on the roof. Uh, obviously, you don't want to, you know, bring them up too high, but it'd be nice if uh, the boat house owners were allowed to change that pitch to either maybe match their house or bring it to a pitch that doesn't leak, uh, you know, something like that. So that was really yeah, what will we allow? 15 feet five. above the, the ground right now for boat houses? 15-6. 15 six or something. Yeah, 15 above 15, the ground. Six. Yeah, that's the midpoint. Right. Like, no, I don't boat house and pitches like this. You're saying, you know, I'm gonna, if I'm going to do something, <coughs> put crosses across it and get it a nice pitch and give it another stick. Okay, I appreciate that. So, well, so I got it. Thank you. All right. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Carl Fuller, uh, 8359 Colony Drive, and I don't know everybody's name, I'm sorry. One of you was asked about uh, us being able to separate our properties there. It's two uh, separate lots, but we are Combined. deed restricted to never sell them. So one of the unique things about having the property on the uh, channel portion of the uh, Colony Drive is 
the whole purpose was set up to build a boathouse with sides. So I know you guys are all familiar with it. If you gentlemen get a chance, take a drive down here and you'll see. So I think that it's just like you said, it, it, we're a boating community and that's why people buy that. You pay extra money for a premium for those lots so you can put a sided boathouse up there. Mm -hmm. So it'd be nice to do it without going to the ZBA as long as you meet all the setbacks. Thanks. Yep, thank you. Any other public comments? <clears throat> Hi, Don Mendy, 8577 Colony. Um, I think the uh, amendments for the residential boathouses, I have no issues with those. I think they're uh, well thought out and, um, and would be good. Uh, regarding the storage containers, yeah, as long as they're used as a temporary use, uh, like a pod, whether we do it as a temporary use permit, I like the idea of connecting it with the building permit. Um, I think that's a good idea, but uh, as far as a permanent accessory structure, I think it's a good idea to um, uh, put some building code regulations on it, like Gary uh, mentioned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mike, did you? Yep. Yep. Okay. I just want to try that pot over. <laughs> yep. Yep. Are you in focus? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for coming, yeah. by the way, Mike. It's our our no cameras. We, we we're not mic'd or anything, so <laughs> yeah. no, no, we're no. we're going to use yours if you can. Oh, yeah. The um, uh, it wasn't my intent to originally speak, but that subject of um, oh, and by the way, my name is Michael Zorin of five eight six five Green City Highway, the Township. Um, I. Um, uh, that subject of the trailers, you know, the, the, what you guys are referring to as the pods and containers, I think the man who spoke before me really did an excellent job. Um, I live, um, uh, if you know where Marine City Highway is, near your Indian Trail, um, on five houses to the east, and that house, four houses to the east, where just all that junk has piled up over the years, that's my neighbor. And they have two of those things, and they use it, um, they use their entire property to, um, like it's been that way for going on nearly two decades where uh, they just um, let people uh, park things like currently they have four mobile homes uh, on their property storage um, they, yep absolute storage so they're like making money um, and they've got two of those trailers and when you're driving into Marine city they were nice enough to paint it so that it matches their fence, but looking at it from our yard, they didn't even paint it, so all we see is rust. <laughs> um, now, well, one day, uh, the uh, St. Clair County Drainage um, uh, Commissioner uh, Bob Wiley was at, uh, at my house, and he says, well, he goes, uh, Mike, I wouldn't even worry about the light uh, violation, he's still junk. Uh, vehicle about violations because uh, one time they had 12 junk vehicles stored back there um, and um, uh, he says I would worry about health problems because some severe problems could happen with that there was things like just uh, tires piling up and at the time he said that there was the biggest rat I've ever seen that I, I mean it was gigantic it popped out and so I think uh, Bob was probably looking at that when he said that but um, anyways I'm just telling you there's some potential dangers that can happen if you get too generous with the rules so right. thank you very much right. I appreciate it yep, thank you any other public comments seeing none moving right along uh, board member comments I guess. Robert, you got it? Good. You guys got anything? I think you prior to receipt of the email that's been going around about ZBA training and planning commission training. It looks like maybe we have a date that's up for possibly ZBA training. Yep, we do. Is it March 31st, correct? March 31st. Correct? March 31st. Yes. And we're going to do that at New Baltimore City Hall, and then we'll do the planning room here. We just thought it's doing it jointly would make more sense. Uh, that's provided both. Baltimore Township's um, contract with right. those get one, so additional you, possible you, sure. additional responsible and they're being gracious enough to let us both communities come and find what's going on. What time is that? 6.30. 6.30. Yep. And the first is at New Baltimore Vegas. City Hall. That's providing the training. Yep. It's at New Baltimore City Hall. It's March 31st. Planning, we don't Planning, we're working on the big board. Yeah. April 14th, if that works okay. for planning. Let me check that date. And that one would be 
um, ends here. Here at New Baltimore coming. With New Baltimore coming here. But that's not set yet, but okay. that works for that. We'll have to let our police know just because we're saying to make sure that works here. But that's a tentative. <laughs> You will get an email confirming. Okay. 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 Very good, thank you. Uh, Dennis, can I again? No, sir, this is, I, this is good. Yeah, so like Brian? Mm -hmm. good, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sandy? Uh, Chris? Rod, you did a really nice job of wrapping up the, uh, the boathouse thing for us. Um, in my mind, I'm not sure that we have the same clarity yet on the container thing. So uh, moving forward, are we, are you going to structure something to present to the Planning Commission yes. based on what you've heard tonight? Absolutely. Okay, I'm good with that. Thanks. Yeah. And then that will all be available you know, for public view. Everyone will see that. And uh, there will be a draft and we'll have discussion and whatever changes they make to it. And ultimately, they'll have a public hearing for you on Yep, thanks. All right, cool. Chris, got it. Pay taxes? Yeah. Yeah? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank our, I think I, I, I'd like to thank everyone for coming, and I think it, it was well time spent, a good hour, and thanks for everybody that showed up for it and everything. Um, one thing I did want to mention uh, tomorrow night, right? Uh, 7 o'clock in the New Baltimore Library. What's that library called? The McDonald Public Library. The McDonald Public Library. Macomb County is having their high water uh, meeting. I'm, I'm planning on attending yeah, we it. We have the Army Corps, Eagle, State Emergency Management, and Macomb County Emergency Management. Yeah, kind of like we did here about yeah. six weeks ago. 7 o'clock. 7 Yeah, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to that one and uh, because it's, it's an issue we're going to have to deal with. So I, I, I just wanted to mention that. So, And uh, thanks for everyone coming, and I, I thought it was a, a good hour spent. So other than that, I'll entertain a motion, motion to, to adjourn. Yeah, any second? All in favor? Ayes. Thanks a lot for coming.